สวัสดีครับ Hello and welcome to Daily Wisdom, Walking the Path with the Buddha. Today we're going to be exploring the three poisons, also known as the three unwholesome roots, the three fires, or the defilements. Before we get started, let me show you where I am. Now that you've had a chance to look around, let's dive into the book, Developing a Life Practice: The Path That Leads to Nibbana. Today we're discussing transforming the three poisons: greed, hatred, and delusion. These are the three poisons that exist in the mind and hold us back from realizing the true nature of reality, the true our true existence. This is greed, hatred, and delusion, also described as craving, anger, and ignorance. We're going to go through each of these three poisons in detail. Essentially, these three poisons are well rooted in the mind from our rebirth into the human realm. Most of us are coming out of the animal realm as we're born into the human realm, and therefore we have the same instincts and the same poisons as we did from our multiple animal existences. So it's important that we understand these three poisons because, as part of the process or part of the path. To attaining nibbana is to eliminate these three poisons: the poison of greed, greed or craving, also described as attachment or desire, is our outward searching, our outward seeking for satisfaction. We're always craving for bigger and better. We're never content with just the bicycle. We want the motorbike. We want the Toyota car. We want the BMW, the Mercedes, the Lamborghini. Take it as the car. Take it as a house. Take it as relationships. Take it as wealth or money. The mind is constantly pursuing more and more and more, thinking that satisfaction or peacefulness is attained through outward craving and outward acquiring of possessions or relationships or things. So we need to work to resolve this craving, eliminate this craving, this greed. This constant accumulation of things, oftentimes this manifests in our lack of generosity or compassion towards other beings. There's antidotes to each of these poisons. For for greed, the antidote is generosity and practicing generosity. In addition, the breathing mindfulness meditation that is taught, and hopefully you're practicing by now, is to eliminate. Thoughts or cut thoughts during meditation, training the mind to come back to the present moment and be in the present moment with the breath. This helps to eliminate the mind's constant craving of thoughts and desires, attachments. Through training the mind in this way in meditation and practicing generosity, you will slowly start to eliminate the poison of greed. Now let's discuss the poison of hatred. Or anger, the poison of hatred or anger manifests in our dislike, our hostility, our ill will towards other beings. We habitually look for situations and uh, things around us that are displeasing to the mind, and when we spot those things that are displeasing, our anger and our hatred, our hostility, our our ill will arises. Sometimes it can go so far. As to consider people enemies and always constantly looking for enemies around us, this poison of hatred holds us back from realizing open relationships where we have no hostility and anger or dislike towards other beings. It holds us back both personally and professionally. The way to resolve the poison of hatred or anger is to practice loving kindness. Loving kindness is goodwill towards all beings. You can practice this in daily life. 
you can practice having goodwill towards all beings. In addition, if you need help with this, eliminating this poison, you can add loving kindness meditation to your meditation practice. So what you would do is you would first practice breathing mindfulness meditation for a period of time to address the greed or craving, reducing attachment and training the mind to be in the present moment. Then you would add in loving kindness meditation. That is also detailed in the book, Developing a Life Practice, The Path That Leads to Nibbana. So practice loving kindness meditation as a way to cultivate goodwill towards all beings or loving kindness. This is the antidote to the poison of hatred and anger. Now let's discuss the poison of delusion. The poison of delusion or ignorance. This poison was more appropriately discussed by Gautama Buddha as the unknowing of true reality. We use these words delusion and ignorance in today's language of English. However, they're often used in a derogatory way. Gautama Buddha would have never called anybody ignorant. Ignorance, uh, as we use it today, is very derogatory and putting somebody down. An enlightened being wouldn't talk down to somebody feeling that they are superior and calling someone else ignorant. Because by calling someone ignorant, you're basically claiming that you're above that person, more wise, more smart. So an enlightened being would never call another person ignorant. But we use this, these words delusion and ignorance to refer to this third poison, which is more appropriately described as the unknowing of true reality. Through understanding true reality, we practice wisdom. The way that we acquire wisdom is through learning and practicing the teachings of Gautama Buddha. Remember, these teachings are not based on belief. Belief or faith, that would not lead one to liberate the mind because the mind can believe anything that it wants. There's multiple things in the world that people believe, but the mind is not yet liberated because it's just based on belief. The teachings of Gautama Buddha are based on truths. It is through learning those truths with the guidance of teachers and independently verifying those truths for yourself that you see the wisdom in the teachings. When you acquire wisdom, this wisdom then liberates the mind from the poison of delusion or ignorance or the unknowing of true reality. So it's very important that you learn and practice the teachings so that you can acquire wisdom and eliminate this poison. Let's just summarize the three poisons and discuss the antidotes very briefly. We have greed or craving. We have hatred or anger. We have delusion, ignorance, or the unknowing of true reality. All three of these poisons exist in the mind of every unenlightened being. It is only when you extinguish all three of these poisons that you will ultimately become enlightened. And you do that through learning and practicing the teachings, which includes the 10 fetters. There's a lot of teachings that you need to learn and practice. It's not easy, but it's not difficult. With help and guidance, you'll be able to learn and practice these teachings so that you can attain Nibbana. To eliminate the poison of greed or craving, you need to practice generosity. Generosity in daily life, helping people, helping people with your time, your effort, perhaps your money, and allowing uh, yourself to not cling or hold on to things, allowing things to just flow, let things go. The next one, anger or hatred. This poison is best remedied through loving kindness as well as compassion, but loving kindness, goodwill towards all beings. That's all beings, not just the people that you like, not just the people that agree with you, not just the people that are in your tribe, but all beings. You need to practice loving kindness to all beings. Practicing that in daily life, smiling at people, being happy, being uh, pleasant with people, uh, smiling and enjoying life, uh, saying hello to people. Uh, you know how to practice loving kindness to all beings, goodwill towards all beings. Doing that on a daily basis, not just the people that you enjoy being around, not just the people that enjoy being around you, but all beings. 
if you need help cultivating loving kindness, you should use loving kindness meditation. This is detailed in the book and is provided as a way for you to cultivate loving kindness in the mind through meditation. And then the third poison, delusion, ignorance, or the unknowing of true reality. This poison is remedied through wisdom. We acquire wisdom through learning the teachings with help and guidance of teachers and then practicing those teachings so that we can see that Gautama Buddha's teachings are indeed truth. They're not belief. They're not based on faith. You shouldn't believe anything that I say. You shouldn't believe anything that you see written or anything that anybody tells you in oral teachings. You should always learn what people are teaching, then practice it and see if that leads to further peacefulness, further liberation of the mind, and allows you to get closer and closer to Nibbana, which be, would be the extinguishing of all discontent emotions, as described in the chapter of the Four Noble Truths. The chapter of the Four Noble Truths goes in detail of what discontentedness is. So if you are acquiring more and more wisdom, eliminating the poison of delusion, ignorance, the unknowing of true reality, you should start seeing that your anger and your frustration or your anger and your hatred goes to frustration. It goes to irritation. It goes to just being slightly annoyed. And then eventually things don't even bother you at all. Nothing can shake your mind. So through practicing these teachings, you acquire wisdom and eliminate this poison of delusion, of ignorance, of unknowing of true reality.